If you are visiting Yosemite National Park in 2024, there's a good chance that you'll need an extra entrance reservation just to get into the park. Or you might not, it's a little bit confusing. So today let's talk all about entrance reservations for Yosemite National Park. My name is Ash. I'm a former park ranger and the founder of Dirt in My Shoes, and I am an expert at helping you navigate these entrance reservations for the national parks. So today I wanted to talk to you specifically about Yosemite, who needs an entrance reservation, when you'll need one, how to get one. I'll walk you through the live process, crossing my fingers that I can get one on video for you um, to watch that whole process and see what it's like. So. Let's jump in and talk all about these Yosemite entrance reservations for 2024. Okay, so what this is and what this entrance reservation does is it gets you into Yosemite during the busiest times of the year. So um, they've gone back and forth. They've had entrance reservations before, then they got rid of them. Now they're bringing them back for 2024. It looks a little bit different this year. Um, I think they made it even more complicated, of course. And so, um, but basically, if you'll be visiting Yosemite National Park, even if you're just driving through the park, even if you don't stop, you're going to need one of these entrance reservations for certain days. So I'll walk you through this, but just know that if you are planning a trip to Yosemite, you'll definitely want to make sure that you either need or don't need one of these reservations because it would be a huge shame to get to the park and not have one and not be able to get in. So let me show you on Yosemite's official website. They have a few different reservations. They have one for February. This video is not about that, although the process is similar. We're talking about these peak hour reservations, which are from April 13th through October 27th. And you can see on here, you'll need a reservation on some days, like April 13th through June 30th, you only need a reservation on Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays. If you're going from July 1st through August 16th, you'll have to have a reservation every day. That's the busiest time of year in Yosemite. And then from August 17th through October 27th, it goes back to the Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays only. And so this is where I feel like it gets really confusing because um, if you're going, let's say you go on a Thursday in June, you don't need one for that Thursday or Friday, but if you're staying till Saturday, then you do need one for that Saturday. So it just gets a little bit confusing, but I'll show you here in a minute when I walk you through the process, kind of how to decide which days you need them and make sure that you have what you need. So those are the dates that you'll wanna be aware of, and I will link this website into the video description so you can jump on over and look at it more in depth. But a couple of other things you'll want to note, um, these reservations are needed from 5 a.m. to 4 p.m. So if it's a day that needs a reservation, then during those hours, you will need to have a reservation to show when you go into through the entrance station. During the reservation process, while you're making these reservations, uh, you'll be able to choose between an all day reservation or afternoons only. I personally would go for the all day reservation always just so that you have that flexibility to go in and out of the park no matter what time it is. But if those aren't available, those ones will go first. They'll be the, the hardest ones to get. Then they are offering up some afternoons only. And if you get one of these afternoons only one, then you can only go into the park after 12 p.m on all three days that your reservation is good for. So, and that's another note too, these reservations are good for three days. So if you get one for a Saturday, it will include Saturday, Sunday, and Monday if a reservation is needed for that Monday if it's a holiday or something. So these are all good for three days and you don't have to enter on the first day. Um, you, you know, you have a little bit of flexibility there. It's just whatever dates you reserve, it's good for three days from that day and you can come and go during the time you reserved. So you don't have to check in at any specific time. Um, they did that last time they did reservations. It's not like that this time. So you can reserve one for Saturday, Sunday, Monday 
and you can show up um, on Sunday, but just know it's still going to expire on Monday. So your three days don't start when you get to the park, your three days start on the actual date that's on your reservation. Now, not everybody needs one of these reservations. There's a few ways around having to have one. Uh, the first is if you have in-park lodging reserved. So if you reserve any of the in-park hotels, uh, any of the in-park campgrounds, those will count as your entrance reservation. You just need to print out proof of your lodging reservation in the park. You can see a list on the website of places that will count towards this. You'll also notice there's some private lodging. These technically are not in the park, they're on private land, but they do count because you have to drive through the park to get to them. So you can look at those options. Other ways around this is you can get a wilderness permit to go backpacking, you can get a half dome permit to climb half dome. So those are some ways around having to get this reservation. If you already have your lodging set up in the park, you don't even have to worry about it. It counts for the dates that you have your lodging. So keep that in mind as well. I have found with reservation systems, a lot of times it does make sense just for me to book lodging in the park instead of dealing with all this. So if you're lucky enough to have a campground reservation or a reservation at one of the lodges, uh, then you can just bypass the system for the days that you have those reservations. Okay, so how do you get one of these reservations? What you're going to do is go to recreation.gov. That's the website that the National Park Service primarily uses to make reservations. And you'll need to do this seven days in advance of the day that you're hoping to have a reservation in Yosemite. So what I'm showing you today, actually, they're doing like a grand release. They're releasing dates, all the dates um, for the summer and beyond today and so I'm going to um, show you how to do that. But by the time you see this video, you'll probably just be going for the last minute reservations that are opened up seven days in advance of the date you're hoping to go. So I will walk you through this, but uh, the process is going to be just slightly different than what I show you today because um, they're only releasing all their dates today and then they'll have these last minute reservations going forward. If you're really worried about getting the reservation you need, then I highly recommend checking back for cancellations uh, even before the seven days in advance of the dates you're hoping to go. I would just check back periodically because people do cancel and you might be able to snatch something up further in advance than the seven day release. So that's a tip that um, I have found to be really helpful. Another thing you'll want to note is that these reservations can only be made online. You can't do these in person and you'll need to be on recreation.gov trying to get your reservation exactly at 8 a.m. Pacific time. If you are not there at 8 a.m. Pacific time, you will not get these reservations. They go within seconds. They are <laughs> snatched up so fast. And so you really do need to be there right at 8 a.m. Make sure you get the correct date that you need to get these reservations on your calendar so that you're there and ready to snatch these up. Okay, so now I wanna show you the process on recreation.gov. So what you'll wanna do is come to recreation.gov about 10 minutes before your reservations open up. So about 7.50 Pacific time, I would be here. I would be logged in, make sure you're logged in. If you don't already have an account, I would not do that on the day you're trying to get your reservations. Definitely come in and make your account in advance so that you don't have to worry about that. Now we're gonna search for Yosemite and you can do Yosemite National Park, just go straight in and look at all that Yosemite has to offer or you can do Yosemite National Park ticketed entry. This is what we need and this is the more direct way to get there. But I'll show you how to get there from Yosemite but I would just click on this one. So we're coming into Yosemite National Park. This is where they have all their campgrounds and everything too, but we are looking for the National Park ticketed entry. And then we are looking for peak hour plus reservations. So the Horsetail Fall is for an event in February. This video is about the summer months, so we're looking for the peak hour. And this will take you to the page that you need. Now, I wanna walk you through just real quick some of these nuances of doing this. So when you get in here and you pull up your dates, 
So like I said, right now they're releasing all of the dates. It probably won't look like this when you come in because when you come in to do this, you're going to be here for the seven days in advance. But for today, they're doing all of these. So what you'll notice as we get into here is like I mentioned, April through June, you only need them on weekends or holidays. So that's Memorial Day. That's why that one's showing up. June, that's Juneteenth. So that needs a reservation as well. But otherwise, it's just Saturdays and Sundays. When we get into July, you'll notice it's every day. That's the time of year that's the busiest. And so from July through August 18th, really, you'll need one of these reservations. And then it goes back to weekends only until October. So if you're coming in here and you're trying to plan out which days you'll need reservations, so let's take June, for example. Let's say you're going to the park from June 5th through the 8th. For the 5th, 6th, and 7th, you don't need one of these reservations. So you can just show up. You don't need to worry about it. You will still need to pay an entrance fee when you get there. That's what like your annual pass will cover, or you can just buy a seven-day pass when you get there. Um, you will still need to pay for that. That's separate from all of this. But for the 5th, 6th, and 7th, you can just show up at the park. However, if you're going to be here for the 8th as well, then you're going to need one of these reservations on the 8th. So they don't care if you've come and go already and if you've already been at the park and you've already been seeing things. Starting on the 8th, they are going to start checking for these reservations. And so even if your trip is from the 5th through the 8th, you will still need to get an entrance reservation for the 8th. So that's where I feel like it just gets kind of confusing. I think a lot of people think, well, I've already been in the park. I've already been doing things. Why would I need to get one for the last day? But they will be checking those on that day. So you'll definitely want to pay attention to that and make sure that you have a reservation for any of the days that you might need one. Now, let's say that you're staying from the 5th through the 9th. You won't need a reservation on the 5th, 6th, or 7th, but you will need one for the 8th. So I would try to get one starting on this day. When it opens up, you'll want to get one. And you'll see if you hover over it, you can see it will show you when the release is. And so this says January 5th at 8 a.m. So I know that's the date I need to put in my calendar because I need this date. Now, because these reservations are good for three days, then you don't need another one for the 9th if you'll be staying for the 9th. So you only need to get one on the 8th and then that will cover you through the weekend. So that's what you'll want to pay attention to. If you will be there in July, for example, then you'll need one for every day. So let's say we're going from July 9th through the 13th. You'll need to get an entrance reservation for the 9th. And so again, if you hover over that, you'll be able to see when that entrance reservation will release for you. And it's good for three days. And so you'll have it for the 9th, 10th, and 11th if you're able to snatch that one up. Now, if you're staying through the 13th, you're going to need another one for the final two days. And so then you'll want to try to get an entrance reservation for the 12th as well. And that 12th will cover you until the 14th. So. You'll want to just pay attention to that. Just make sure you have the reservation for the dates that you're going to be there when they are checking for reservations. But it's about 8 o'clock Pacific now, and so these are all going to open up, and I'm going to show you how to snatch one of these up. So as soon as the clock hits 8, I just refresh my page so I can get in here. You'll see all of these turn blue because they're now available. So I'm going to go for this one. You only need one per vehicle, and I'm going to select my entry window and hit request tickets. And I'm trying to hit request tickets as quickly as I can once those open up, and I got in here and I got it, so that's great. Now I am going to just make sure my information is correct. I'm going to read through this. If you're only staying for three days, this you'll see it's good for the 9th, 10th, and 11th, and I can enter any time during this window, and so that's working just fine. There we go. Going to proceed to cart, put it in there. Now, if I am staying, again, like I mentioned, if I'm staying for a couple more days, then I have to go through this process again. So I'm gonna put in Yosemite, I'm gonna go straight to the ticketed entry. You'll see my other one is in my cart, and so, you know, that one's just sitting there waiting for me. 
But I'm gonna see if I can get a second one here to show you what to do. So my other one is good for the 9th, 10th, and 11th. I need one for the 12th. I'm going to add my vehicle 3D entry. I want this entry window. You might see some different entry window options. They did say they were gonna have an afternoon only, which I guess maybe they're just not releasing those today. Maybe they'll be releasing those in the seven day in advance release. And so you might see a couple different things, but I would try to get the full day one. Okay, and then you'll see this one is good for the 12th through the 14th. So I'm set for six days in the park at this point. Fill in your information, read through all of this, but if you only need one reservation, then read through it the first time through. If you're trying to get multiple reservations, I would just skip over this until you have gotten the last reservation you need in your cart. So you'll wanna read through all of that and then we'll proceed to cart. Okay, so I'm just checking the dates are right. Everything looks good. It's $2 per reservation. And so you'll pay that. You'll also need to make sure that whoever's name is on this reservation, that they will be in the car with you. And so what I like to do, because it does get really competitive, is have any adult who's going to be in the vehicle go through this process and try to get them. Because sometimes, as especially for the last minute ones, as it gets closer, you're gonna have a really hard time getting those. And so I would make a, an account and try to get these, but I would also have my husband who will also be in the vehicle with me, make an account and try to get these. And then, you know, we'll just get rid of the ones if we have extras or anything, but at least we have both of us trying to get them in case it just gets really, really competitive. So at this point, you'll proceed to payment. You have 15 minutes to finish this process. And then you'll just put in your payment info and finish out the process. You'll get two emails, one's a receipt, and one is your actual reservation. So be sure you bring your actual reservation with you to show at the entrance station. That's what they'll be looking at, not the receipt email. So you'll get both, but make sure you bring the reservation one. You can screenshot the reservation email um, and have it on your phone, but I would also bring a paper copy, the Wi-Fi, the internet, just it's not super reliable in the national parks. So it is nice to have a paper copy. And then from there, you're set. You can just go in the park anytime between those hours. Um, again, you don't have to go in that first day. You don't have to check in or anything. You just can only come in during the dates that your reservation is good for. So. If you reserve the 9th through the 11th and then plans change and you end up not getting to the park till the 11th, that's just fine. Your reservation is still good, but it will expire at the end of the day on the 11th. Let's talk about what to do if you're not able to get one of these reservations. Maybe it's a last minute trip. Maybe everything just got snatched up, um, but there are some ways around needing this reservation. So I already mentioned if you have lodging or camping reservations in the park, wilderness permits, half dome permits, any of that will get you in um, instead of needing one of these reservations for the dates that you've reserved those things. So that's one way around it. Another option is to visit the park during one of the months where you don't need reservations on the weekdays. So that's you know April, May, June, um, half of August, September, and October you can go during a weekday and not need one of these reservations. And so if you're not able to get one um, or you just don't wanna have to deal with this, plan a weekday trip during one of those months and you won't need one of these reservations. You can also enter the park outside of those reservation times. So you can go in before 5 a.m. or after 4 p.m. Um, that is an alternative. It's pretty early or pretty late. So, uh, you know, you'll just need to make your plans around that, but that's an option as well. You can also take the Yarts bus. Um, this is a bus that takes people from the communities outside of Yosemite into Yosemite Valley. And so that's an option. If you take the Yarts bus, then you don't need one of these extra reservations. You can also enter the park on foot, on a bike, on a horse. <laughs> Those don't require reservations. 
One other thing you can do, and I would say this is kind of your last resort, but you can just visit Hetch Hetchy. Hetch Hetchy is a portion of Yosemite National Park where they're not checking reservations. It's the only part of the park actually where they're not checking reservations. Um, Hetch Hetchy is really beautiful. There's a couple of trails in there. It's very small. There's not very much parking or anything like that. And so um, although it's a beautiful area, it doesn't have any of like the really big can't miss activities. And so uh, you don't want to probably just plan on only going to Hetch Hetchy. You want to have, uh, you know, other plans in place to get to other parts of the park. But that is an area that you can visit if you don't have a reservation. Otherwise, you'll just want to plan on getting online on recreation.gov seven days in advance of the dates you're hoping to go at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Do not be late. And that is how you will snatch up one of these reservations. Um, if you need any help planning your Yosemite trip, I have tons of free articles on dirtinmyshoes.com. I also have a Yosemite itinerary that's an hour by hour schedule. It will walk you through exactly what I would do, more in depth of how to get these reservations, what activities you definitely don't wanna miss, how to avoid the crowds, because even if you get a reservation here, the crowds are crazy in this park. And so these Yosemite itineraries will help a lot with that. I wish you all the best. I hope that you're able to get the reservation that you need. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I have even more Yosemite videos that you can watch. And I hope that you have a great time in this beautiful national park.